nine days today. All right. I don't, I've never spoken in front of a group like this at all, but uh, I just am grateful for Mark to you know offer me the, the chance to come here and tell my story and get out of my comfort zone because you know what I'm doing what I was doing out there was not working, and I'm just like desperate to do whatever it takes to to change you know because if I don't I'm gonna die so here we go I'll do the best I can you know um, so first drink alcohol when I was 13 years old. I grew up in uh, Lake Sammamish. I had a pretty good upbringing. Played baseball. My dad was like the coach of my baseball teams and I had a twin brother and uh, played football and you know had a great upbringing. And, uh, 13 years old for some reason I just decided that I needed to uh, to drink and uh, I don't know I guess I always felt kind of just uh, out of place just different from others and I guess at that time I just needed something to to comfort myself i guess and so i drank at 13 and i liked the feeling you know i could you know like be whoever i needed to be at the time situation and uh dude, this is so fucking hard for me i'm sorry fuck so you know and by the time i was 16 years old i got arrested for the first time went to juvenile hall for possession of marijuana um, my parents found it and called the cops on me and uh, <laughs> so I went to jail for like seven days and got out and uh, you know just continued drinking and smoking weed and all those type of things and uh, by the time I was 18 years old I uh, got arrested for a robbery and I was just like even before that I was just like uh, just involved in like uh, criminal activity I don't know what it was but vandalism and burning stuff and I was just a uh, rebel, I guess, and uh, 18, like, I was drunk and ended up robbing a couple of people for their money and, and went to King County Jail first time, and, and I'm going to prison, Clown Bay, and uh, did a year on that, and uh, yeah, got out and um, went right back to the same type of stuff, just drinking, doing drugs, and, you know, that always just try and get a girlfriend, get a car, get a house. And then once I get that, I just t tear my life apart and bring it, pull it right back down on, on me every single time. And, uh, yeah, it's, it was just like the same pattern my whole life. And, um, 25 years old, uh, I was drinking and I was like kicking heroin and everything and, um, ended up like causing the death of a friend of mine, you know, I mean, it's a long story. I don't really want to get into it, but that did happen. You know, I ended up spending like eight years in prison over that as a direct result of my using, you know, and, um, you know, just, yeah, I spent like six years on that and all, some of the worst places I could imagine, you know, and just seeing things I never see have seen in my life or would want to see and, you know, watching riots happen and just horrible stuff like that, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was, I still haven't really processed that or gotten over that. I don't know, but, uh, it was a nightmare, you know, and, and my life has been a nightmare. Anytime I, I do drugs or drink alcohol, it's just been a nightmare. And, uh, I got out of that and, uh, released to an Oxford house and spent like six months in the Oxford house. And, um, uh, it was a great experience, you know, and, uh, you know, end up getting a girlfriend, getting the car, getting a job. And, <laughs> you know, I start, I raised her kid for a while for like, you know, the first six years of her life. And then, um, you know, that we ended up splitting up and I just, you know, end up going, getting back into drugs and drinking, doing heroin, all, all the stuff and, uh, lost everything, you know, and, uh, you know, I guess I, I've always known that I had a, for a long time, I've always known that it was a problem, but I just, and I've been, and I've, you know, gone to meetings since I was 15 years old, but I never actually put into action to do it. So I guess it never worked out, you know? And, um, in like 2018, I moved out to Whidbey Island and, uh, met Mark T <laughs> who has been like the most, had, had the most impact on me than anyone in my life, you know? And, um, uh, actually just, I don't know, for some reason it uh, just, I was broken enough to the point where I was ready to, to learn and listen. And 
you know. Um, man. So, I got sober for like six months when I moved to the island and decided <coughs> to start like seeing some girl in the program, and that was a mistake. And uh, shortly after that, went back to using, and uh, yeah, just in and out of recovery. Like, I get a few months and then relapse again. Like, I, I don't even can't even tell you how many times I've lived lived like fifteen different places in the last few years, and it's just been chaos. You know, it's just like going from one crisis to crisis you know just like getting my life's basically like get just getting through the next like jail sentence prison sentence infection on my face or you know just debacle you know and it's just like i haven't really even had the opportunity to really live free you know and um yeah so i probably spent a qu half of my adult life locked up <laughs> and it's not funny but you know um I just have been miserable and and that you know like coming coming to these meetings i realized that there is hope actually and you know i was just like people have shown me love that i've never experienced in my life you know like i consider some of the people i met on the island like more family than my real than my real family is you know at least you know they understand me you know and it's like no matter what i do it's like they don't they don't just go away you know even though like everything i do I, I create myself, you know, but it's like, I can, no matter what happens, they're still there for me, you know, and I've never experienced that type of love. And it's just like, open up my heart, I guess, to new things. So, you know, cause I, I don't know, I just, drugs are a part of my story, but it definitely was alcohol and that phenomenal crane that started it all. But this last year was just terrible. And I just, multiple times, I was just like on the brink of death, you know, and the only reason why I'm still here, still here is God, definitely. You know, there's no way that uh, someone's that lucky, you know. So God's definitely had a hand on my life for a long time, you know. And so I just got a treatment like a month ago. Went to PCN, my seventh treatment center. And uh, moved into Oxford again. So I'm living up in Marysville. And, you know, 80 days clean. And got, I'm going to IOP three days a week. Going to the recovery cafe in Everett once a week. And just focus on my recovery because... You know, if I don't put that first in my life as a number one priority, I'm just going to get what I've always gotten. And that's big, you know, jails, institutions, and death. Literally, you know, what the literature, literature says, you know. And, uh, you know, I got a son whose birthday is today. He turns eight years old, you know, and, and I haven't seen him in years. And, uh, you know, that shit breaks my heart, you know. And it's not, you know, and the only way I'm ever going to get him back in my life is, is if I put action in this program, you know. So I got a sponsor another sponsor. I'm actually like, I go to a lot of CA meetings, but they read out of the big book, you know, and that's, cause that's where the real magic is, you know, and I've never completed the steps. I got to like step nine. So I'm just like doing whatever I can to make that happen, you know? And, um, so yeah, Mark called me like a week ago and asked me if I wanted to do this. And I said, okay. And I really <laughs> didn't want to, you know, cause talking in front of people is, and talking about my feelings is not something that I really am good at or know how to do, you know? But I know that if I don't get on my comfort zone and like, then I'm just going to keep getting the same results. And I'm just tired of not living a free life in, in this program. You know, it's like, I've seen so many miracles and, and I know that it's possible. And I just thank you for the opportunity to come here and speak. Thank you. All right.